So there's two kinds of error. There's systematic or determinant error, which affects all of your measurements in the same way. And there's also random error or indeterminate. Systematic error is a reproducible error. Uh, that means that it affects all of your data in the same way. It's some kind of claw, flaw in the calibration or in the instrument function or there's an interference, or the procedure isn't quite right, and all of that affects your each each individual measurement in the in a predictable and in, in the same type of way. So if you have a graph um, where you're correlating, where, where this is your these should, these are your true measurements. So say it's a concentration and absorbance or something like that that we're going to do um, in one, in some of the labs this year uh, or this semester. So, say these are your true measurements in pink. Well, a systematic error would cause either all of your measurements to go up or it might change the slope. Um, and those are the types of things that you want to be looking out for. The trick with systematic errors is that you don't always actually know whether, they're, whether there's an error or not. So there's all this checking and checking and double checking and triple checking and going back and checking again um, that happens in science. And that's all because uh, people are concerned about these systematic errors, especially when you're doing cutting edge research where you're doing something that's actually never been done before. So it's not like measuring an unknown that's all of your classmates are doing. You know, you're doing it by yourself and then you have to publish this data and you know, make interpretations and whatnot. And so it's really actually very critical that you check for systematic errors because you know, if someone comes back and says, you know what, we checked, we couldn't reproduce your results. Uh, we think you know, you falsified it or um, you know something and and your reputation is like it's a huge blow to your reputation identifying systematic errors is something that everybody or that all researchers all scientists are really concerned about um, and we're going to talk a lot about it this semester because analytical chemistry is all about quantitation or it's a lot about quantitation and identifying systematic errors is really important all right so you can analyze reference materials or if you have a sample you can make up something very similar to this to your sample in the same type of matrix and then run that. Let's call the lab fortified blank. Uh, you can analyze blanks. Uh, that might help you know if, if you know your whole baseline is shifted. Um, if your blank is reading something other than zero, um, then you have you often have, will have a problem. Um, you can analyze the same sample with different methods and if you get if you don't get the same answer that is also an indicator that there's a problem. Um, and you can an analyze the same sample at different labs. I know that for my research, um, I like I need to have total metal concentrations in soils, and so I often send um, multiple samples to the same lab, or I send um, the same sample to different labs, or get them analyzed by different techniques in order to try to uh, rule out systematic errors. So that when I know that I have uh, that I know that I have a good data set. So, random errors, on the other hand, are always present and can't be corrected. So, um, we do stuff like weigh something a bunch of times so that we could try to quantify the random the random errors. Um, but that's they result from stuff like electronic noise, weighing errors, um, having different people make measurements, or having the same person on different days making measurements. And you know, is this 2.4 or 2.5? I don't know. Is it? Those are the types of uh, th things that um, are random errors. You can't really correct for that. Um, you know, you can be try to be as consistent as possible, but um, there's still errors. There's still all measurements are still affected by random errors. Another thing to think about when you're thinking about errors is the absolute uncertainties associated with each of the techniques that you're using. So, for an exi for example, an analytical balance has a an inherent uncertainty of 0 0.3 milligrams. Um, and that's a true for not just the analytical balance, but for all the glassware as well. The heart of this matter is that you can have precision where your numbers are all very close together, so that would give you a small standard deviation. And they can be, or they could be accurate, where you have the mean is very close to the true value. So each of these measurements, if you average it, it's very close to the center of the target. 
but clearly they're not, none of the individual measurements are anywhere near the center of the target. So, um, but accuracy and precision are two different things. Um, but what you, you ideally would like are both measurements that are both accurate and precise, so always hitting the center of the precision, target. Precision, if you are precise but not accurate, that might indicate some um, systematic error. If you were accurate but not precise, then you would be looking at, uh, at a random error, generally. An excellent example of accuracy and precision not being correlated is this figure here, where you can see that um, the absolute error in four different analyst measurements of two different compounds. So what you can see is that analyst one is both um, accurate or quite accurate and precise. Perhaps a little bit of a little bit uh, the average is a little bit less than the true value. Analyst two has quite a bit more variance, uh, and uh, actually the average is a bit higher than the true value, um, but you can see a significant spread. Um, and so you can also see that analysts three and four that are analyzing nicotinic acid, uh, those are consistently low, indicating both um, potentially systematic error as well as um, some pretty substantial random error uh, that you can see there with analyst four. So this is an excellent example of where accuracy does not correlate, or I'm sorry, precision does not correlate with accuracy.